we do have some widescreen shenanigans. However, so select, you need to press when getting into the MAME and Neo Geo. Pressing both of them will get you the special menu. And here having quick load, quick save. So the same function is kind of deluxe. Okay, so let's start off with the game. All right, let's select and start, let's load. I love it when they make these tiny screenshots and that works like a charm. So quick load, quick save. I love it that we have like different menu or at least a special picture with the menus where we can easily switch. So the D-pad itself is not going to be a pleasant experience. Joystick seems to be working fine. Seems to be working fine. You see, trying to shoot different direction with a D-pad, it's just freaking impossible. The display, however, is absolutely beautiful. I think even the camera picks it up. So when it comes to that, it's great, but also the audio. This tiny speaker at the back sounds amazing. But let's get in some other games. So let's move on to some main, or at least like arcade. So this is not going to be a pleasant experience because we have a really horrible D-pad or a shitty D-pad, I love to call it. Which will we'll try to play. Let's see if we can get everything into an uncertain... No, it was an uncertain move out, but this is impossible with these D-pads. So the analog stick is fine. I think it's a game, I don't notice too many problems. Audio-wise, it's great. Did ho I did notice some minor hiccups in the beginning when it comes to the character selection screen, but besides that, there's nothing much when it comes to that. So overall Malaysia performance, well. So another system I love to try out is some PlayStation 1. This is new, this was not available on the previous model. The audio, or at least the music, has not been implemented. So the D-pad is fine for just playing some racing games. That is no problem whatsoever. Analog stick and the D-pad have been mapped. But I find it not comfortable at all. Simply with the button placement, but also the size. Why does that freaking annoying guy keep like driving in front of me? Go away. But so far, the emulation of PlayStation 1 seems to be running fine. So that's great. We can also make quick loads, quick save if you want to. Let's see how long that takes. Okay, that works quite fast. No problem there whatsoever. But there's a little bit of a downside, there is no music. The soul of the game is away, it's gone. More widescreen shenanigans, yep. That is what we're getting with this freaking device. I find it a little bit of a downside that we don't have the option to change out the SPS ratio. And the reason why, because we have seen cheap devices that actually have no problem with that. Game sticks that can just switch easily through, let's say different ratios, regions, you name it. But we cannot do this with this. And that's one of those many things I've been complaining for many years now. I think we should put it on the t-shirt. There is always something they mess up. And that is a fact. Hey. Ah, there goes my egg. This, by the way, it's the cheating version. We cannot die. <laughs> Next up, some Super NES. Mm, it seems to be there is no problem with the emulation itself. No weird audio things going on. So the audio is already maxed up. I love it when you're going to be pushing the volume button. You can just actually see how much power your battery still has. So far so good. So that's great to see that we can actually have some good performance here. But the D-pad is not pleasant to play with these kind of games. But the MLA's performance of Super NES is great, absolutely. 
But one of the things I really hate about these devices, when they're putting a list on here and everything is going to be having a problem with alphabetic order. And I'm guessing this has to do of, let's say, the numbers of front of it. However, it's just one huge mess and I hate it. We do have a search option, that's cool, but still a mess, absolutely. And well, let's get into some emulation of the Sega Genesis and that seems to be working all fine so far. Yep, sound effects right here. And here how the game plays. Push him in the face and kick him in the balls. That's how we go to play. Beef Cave turns into Wolfie. Okay. The only weird thing is that we have this. No! Just jump on them. Go. Ah, yeah. And I just get punched in the face. <laughs> However, emulation performance is great. We can also make quick load, quick save here. But no SPS ratio. That would be a great upgrade for the next time. Man, the audio goes like so much louder with the Game Boy emulator. At first I was thinking it was completely sounding wrong, but so far no problem. Then the biggest problem is the SPS ratio of course. This looks absolutely hideous. But when it comes to let's say the Game Boy, it's possible to play. So let's move on into some rally on the Game Boy Advance. I think a Game Boy Advance will utilize the screen a little bit better than a normal Game Boy, but let's find out if we can actually play the game and how the emulation performance is. So far, so good. No weird audio glitches whatsoever. Also, the audio sounds great. Oh, there's my brake. Crap, I didn't know. Don't you love that these games all look and sound sometimes the same? Every single time I'm looking at this, the only thing I see is some Super Mario Kart. But maybe that's me. But it's kind of fun. Something different with a car. Driving fast. It's a kind of cool game, by the way. Ooh. I love rally games. Seriously, I love them. Ooh. But the overall emulation performance is nice. Next up some PC Engine, but I did notice some minor hiccups again in the beginning. You can hear the audio. That is struggles. So the emulation is not perfect on PC Engine part. Where it's a minor dip, it is a dip. Yeah, so that's a little bit of a shame that PC Engine doesn't run 100%. The system you don't see very often on these cheap devices is some Atari. Oh man, that's out. Let's lower it. <laughs> but out of the box, it seems to be working just fine when it comes to the Atari part. I can even use the analog stick. That's so much better. Oh, this is even before my time, this. <laughs> so let's move on to the master system and the overall performance seems to be working great as it is but when it comes to these cheaper devices it's absolutely great they added so many new platforms however i wish it went like a little bit of an option of tweaking But also this emulation performance seems to be running just fine. The biggest problem I know is the audio levels between the emulators. The mass system sounds okay, where Atari was absolutely sounding way too loud. But there's absolutely nothing to complain here when it comes to the emulation performance of the master system itself. Neo Geo Pocket is another system that is kind of cool. However, widescreen shenanigans and the A button is mapped to the B. That's something I noticed. Yep, another problem is we cannot remap anything as you see is as you're getting it. But so far the emulation seems to be working just fine with this too. Oh man, such a fun game. And if you're looking at it graphical wise, this thing was kind of cool for back in the time. 
So first of all, we didn't check out any MAME games. We did particularly like the New Geo part in the beginning. So let's see how this will run. Okay. Do feels a little bit choppy, but maybe that's just me. Oh no, it runs choppy. You can just hear it on the audio part. And this is mainly to do that they're just setting up the wrong emulator. So with those emulator devices or handhelds, we can switch emulators. Sometimes it's an easy fix by switching a different emulator within a couple of games and we're ready to go. But yep, what you see is what you're getting. And with the main part, they completely messed it up. And take note that there's going to be just one single game, like the 64 Street game, that sometimes struggle with certain emulators. It is playable, but with some dips.